With the goal of longevity, a major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible, including kidney, liver, immune, metabolic health, inflammation, and many others. But that's not the only focus. And with that in mind, I'm regularly tracking blood pressure, which then raises the question, why is blood pressure important? And that's what we'll see here. So in this study, and I link to the study in the video's description, reducing blood pressure was associated with a 15% lower risk of dementia and a lower risk of cardiovascular related outcomes, including a lower risk of myocardial infarction, so heart attack, stroke, heart failure, and cardiovascular death. Now in contrast, note that systolic blood pressure increases during aging and diastolic blood pressure increases until midlife and then it declines during aging. If you're interested in seeing those data, I have a new Patreon tier dedicated specifically to what's optimal for biomarkers. And this isn't the reference range. This is what may be optimal based on the most recent science, the most available science that currently includes more than two plus hours of video content and 48 published references. Now included in this tier is blood pressure. So if you're interested in that, check it out. All right, so back to our story, and this is a biohacking or health optimization focused channel. So what's my data? And that's what we'll see here, starting off with data for systolic blood pressure. And note that the time scale, the data that I'm about to show starts from September of 2022 and goes through early of May, 2025. And I have 336 data points for systolic and diastolic blood pressure during that two plus or almost three year period. Now note a few caveats and there can be variability for any biomarker test and blood pressure is not immune to that. So it's important to standardize uh, measurement the, or standardize the technique for measurement to minimize variability from external sources. So with that in mind, all of the data for those 336 tests were between at the same time of day, 11.30 to 1 p.m., almost all of it from 11.30 to 12, rarely from 12 to 1, but there are some data points from 12 to 1. Nonetheless, that's a very tight window. I don't have any data points in this that are at 9 in the morning or you know 5 at night. This is all within that tight 90-minute uh, window. I took blood pressure five to six times during that window, so from 11.30 to 12, measuring, keeping the cuff on my arm and then measuring five to six times every couple of minutes. And then I took the average of those five to six values and recorded it on that, on that day. And also in terms of eating and drinking, this is four to five hours after I consumed any food or water. So uh, these are basically days where I consumed almost all of my calories in the morning and then didn't eat anything for four to five hours, four to five hours and then tested blood pressure. All right, so on to the data. So we're gonna see data for systolic blood pressure first. In 2022, average systolic blood pressure was about 122 millimeters of mercury. In 2023, average values were 119. 2024, down to 118. And currently in 2025 through early May, it was still around 118. So what we can see from almost three years of data is that I've resisted the age-related increase for systolic blood pressure. And as I mentioned earlier, systolic blood pressure increases pretty continuously during aging. All right, so what about diastolic blood pressure? So here, average values in 2022 were around 73, uh, 70 in 2023, about 69 in 2024, and back to about 70 in the early part of 2025. So here too, I've resisted the age-related increase at least until midlife, so diastolic blood pressure increases from youth until midlife, and then it declines after that. So within the chronological age, 50 to 60, which is where I am right now, I should expect to see an increase during aging, not a decrease. So I've resisted, resisted that age-related increase. Now, average blood pressure in youth, based on a study of about 386,000 people, again, that's on the Patreon tier if you wanna see the actual data, is 118 over 67, and that's the average value for 18-year-olds. So my data is similar to the data in youth, 118 over 70, or the average data found in 18-year-olds. In contrast, chronological age expected, CA expected blood pressure for my chronological age of 52 years would be 127 over 77. So this is good news that I've resisted the chronological age expected value for blood pressure and having relatively youthful values. So this is good news. But then the question is how? How have I been able to resist the age-related change and improve it over the past three years? One factor that may optimize blood pressure, at least in my case, is a relatively lower body weight. And that's what we'll see here with data for systolic blood pressure on the left and diastolic blood pressure on the right. 
And then on the x-axis, we've got data for body weight. So I should mention that I weigh myself every morning after using the bathroom. So what we can see in looking at the correlation for blood pressure with body weight is that there is a significant positive correlation for both systolic and diastolic with uh, body weight. And that correlation coefficient is 0.4, and we can see that the p-value in both cases is far below 0.05. So what that suggests is that when my body weight is on the lower side, and that's around 138 to 140 pounds, that's significantly correlated with my lowest or most youthful blood pressure, and that's both the combination of systolic and diastolic. But in contrast, when I was about 15 pounds heavier earlier in 2022, that was significantly correlated with higher blood pressures, a higher systolic and a higher diastolic. So, and that's going in the wrong direction because that's the age-related trend that will be following the chronological age expected data for blood pressure. In other words, an increasing systolic and diastolic blood pressure in conjunction with that higher body weight. Now note that my current body weight is 140 pounds. I, I'm not trying to get leaner than 140 as I can start to lose muscle mass and, and I'm not interested in losing any, any muscle mass at all as it, it can affect in workout performance and muscle mass that already declines during aging. So I'm not trying to lose any muscle mass because I've gotten too lean. So with that in mind, what will I do if blood pressure starts to decrease? I may have already maximized the ROI on getting lean and optimizing blood pressure. So what will I do if eventually blood pressure starts to trickle in the wrong direction? Now, what I plan on doing is looking at correlations with diet, which I'm currently tracking, including foods, macros, and micros with systolic blood pressure. So if, if I see any deviation from keeping it relatively youthful, I intend on tweaking the diet to try to keep blood pressure as youthful as possible for as long as possible. And those data are on the correlations tier on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And also note that also post in Patreon tiers at least twice a day, where you can also get early ad-free access and I offer blood test consults. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself that help support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests, the clearly filtered water filter, which I use every day, at-home metabolomics, oral microbiome composition, NAD testing with Ginfinity, epigenetic testing, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which also includes the DNA methylation test Grimage, green tea, which I drink every day, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, new merch, as shown here, and as I'm wearing. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Link in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.